And for those of you who don't know, Mark the Firm is a voluntary organization for people between 17 and 35 years of age. So on behalf of our 9,000 members, I have a couple of yes-no questions for you. And if you want to expand them, but eventually we need yes-no answers. Okay, that's very hard for politicians to do, but I'll do my best. <laughs> so Mr. McGinnis, should the age for presidential candidates be reduced to 21 years? Yes, yes, definitely. Why so? Well, because I believe that uh, young people are very intelligent, they're very highly educated, uh, they understand what's happening in the world, they understand what's happening in their own country, and I think that uh, it's absolutely important that we engage as many uh, young people as possible in the democratic process. So I think there's a duty and a responsibility on all of us to make it easier for people to vote not make it more difficult. Very good. That's a yes, definitely. That's a definite yes, yeah. Question number two. Do you think that the process of becoming a presidential candidate should be simplified? Yeah, I absolutely do believe that. And I know that there's a number of people struggling at the moment to get their names on the ballot paper. And I don't agree with that. I think that if people want to stand in the presidential election, it should be made as easy as possible. I would absolutely welcome uh, all those who wish to contest the election onto the ballot paper. I think that, that's very, very important that the democratic process isn't constructed in a way that prohibits uh, those like Dana and others who wish to participate in the election. Very good. Number three, should the president have a greater role in the governance of our country? Well, I suppose that would be a, a tricky question, uh, given that many people see the government of the day as the or the Rockers, the Senate, and the uh, the uh, House with the TVs reside, the dog as the key decision makers in the life of this nation. But I do think that there is uh, an argument to seriously consider how the President could have a greater role without infringing the authority of the elected representatives of the Irish people. So that, that's something that should be a matter for discussion uh, amongst the political parties. And uh, I think that many people uh, would consider that the president does a very important job in terms of inspiring the nation, uh, attracting foreign direct investment to make sure our young people have jobs, and generally keeping up the morale of the citizens. To extend that role into a decision-making role vis-a-vis -vis the process of government would have to be done in consultation with the Iraqis. Very good. Um, this is probably related to Ossimacra. In your opinion, would the President of Mothra, or similar organisations, be a candidate for a seat in the Council of State? Well, I mean, rural Ireland is hugely important to this country, and the agriculture sector is a massive national asset for Ireland. And in fact, at this time of doom and economic gloom, the only sector that is actually doing really well and helping to pull us out of the economic distress that we're in at the moment is the agriculture sector and the agri-food sector. So I think it would be hugely important that that section of our society would be represented, yes. But that, that's something that I would see you to consider. Very good. Should the next be held on a Saturday to facilitate younger people? Uh, absolutely, I'm really 100% behind that idea. I think that it's, it's hugely important that as many people as possible have the ability to vote. And I think even consideration should be given to having the election uh, on a Friday and a Saturday over a two-day period so that those people who are away from home, who find it difficult to get back, can be reassured that the vote will be there and they'll have the opportunity to vote. But yes, if you were asked me to come for one day when the election should be held, I would prefer a Saturday to any other day of the week. Very good. And lastly, how would you use the presidency to improve the lives of younger people? Well, can I say first of all, uh, I'm the grandson of an English young farmer. Uh, my, my grandfather and grandmother had a small whitewashed cottage with a thatched roof and a place called the Middle Lollies in County Donegal, between Bulkrana and Cairndona. And when school was out in Derry, that's where I went every summer. And they represent some of the happiest days of my life. But I am someone who has struggled uh, for all of my life. And I understand that 
people are struggling now. We struggled in the north for a very, very long time. The people that I come from were treated like second class, third class citizens. By successive British governments and unionist administration in Belfast, we're no longer second class citizens. And primarily because young people like myself stood up and said, we're not prepared to accept this anymore. So, in my role in the peace process, I have tried to inspire people in the north to support peace and support change. And we've brought about phenomenal change. We're reaching out to hand the friendship to our unionist brothers and sisters. People wondered, how could I get on with Ian Paisley? But I did. How could I ever get on with Peter Robinson? But I do. And so I, after having inspired people in the North, want to inspire the whole of Ireland. My campaign is an all-Ireland campaign. It's going to be a very active campaign in the six northern counties and in every other county in Ireland. And I am saying to the Irish people, I want to inspire you to the new republic. To have a conversation about how we get to the new Ireland. Fitting the north end of that is very, very important. For example, in agriculture, there needs to be an all Ireland agricultural strategy. Can I commend Simon Coveney and Michelle O'Neill, our agriculture manager who's with us here today, to continue with the great work that they're doing? When I uh, assumed the office of uh, Deputy First Minister in the north, I had the choice of 10 departments. I chose agriculture as one of our three departments and I chose Michelle O'Neill as our uh, Agriculture Minister. That's the importance we play on the whole issue of agriculture and how it feeds into developing our economy. So I hope to be a president that will inspire the Irish people. Uh, I've been in the Oval Office with three American presidents. I've been in South Africa at the invitation of Nelson Mandela. I'm personal friends with Sir Ramaphosa and Ralph Meyer, who were the chief negotiators in the South African conflict. I've been to Baghdad, I've spoken to the protagonists of the Rank, I've been to Sri Lanka at the present at the invitation of the president of Sri Lanka and the Tamil Tigers. I've been to the vast country. So I am seen as a peacemaker, as someone who has made a massive contribution to one of the most successful peace processes in the world today. So an inspiring people, not just in the north, but all around the world in relation to what we've done. My task is to inspire the rest of Ireland, particularly uh, at a time of great economic boom, and I want to be part, along with the agri-food industry and our farmers, in helping to pull us out of the distress that our people are in at the moment.